Everything will not come to order. This is, there's a gavel in there if you want it. <laughs> oh, I'll pass. Um, this is <clears throat> the October 23rd meeting of the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction. And I want to announce that this meeting is being recorded. I don't think we have any public comment because there's no member of the public here. So we'll go right along to approval of uh, the minutes from the last meeting. I move to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Does anyone have any comments or discussion? I'll second now. Discussion? Okay. Um, of course, you're right. I just found the agenda. Oh, good. For today. Excellent. Um, somebody's phone just rang, but I guess it's that was me. I'm fixing it. Okay. Good. Um, so, uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. We will accept the uh, minutes of the last meeting. So let's talk about the forums. I thought it was pretty interesting. We had a good turnout. Mm -hmm. Learned some things. Learned a lot. Yeah. Um, I just want to apologize profusely because I turned on the camera in the other space, the first um, hearing, <clears throat> and I didn't push um, a second button. I don't. I didn't know how to use that camera. It's not like this one, and so we didn't actually record it. And I am really sorry about that. We. Rec I think there's an audio recording. Oh, now I got to come clean. <laughs> yeah, Kim and I did it together. But um, I think that we may have audio recorded it for whatever that's worth. I did take a lot of notes, and I'm happy to share those with everyone if it would be useful from both of them, but um, we don't have a recording on the first one, so apologies to everyone. And I, I also took, I took notes, notes too, as well. such as they are. Yeah. I thought that um, it, was, it was interesting, some of the comments that were made that seemed to contradict some of the information that um, we gathered. Um, or maybe, maybe it wasn't a contradiction um, exactly. Um, for example, one person talked about how it, 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 when she was walking her dog in the roundhouse parking lot, how there was someone spraying. Um, and I thought that I thought that what we had been told was that they, they were you know, very restricted use of pesticides or herbicides in parking lots, but it was allowed. But that was you know unusual. But it sounded like. There's a lot of spraying going on that day, mm. so that that concerned me. When we see someone spraying, can we make an assumption? It could be anything. Is there anything else they could be spraying? Well, I think like if it had been dust or if it had been vinegar, <laughs> probably she would have noticed the smell. Uh, no. But um, other than that, no, I think it would be a mistake to make an assumption. Yeah. What do you think? I I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if a person isn't wearing protective gear, which they should be, they it's should hard be. to do. Yeah. Um, I, I was impressed with this, you know, you think of Broad Book Coalition, you know, the, the balance of this is what, this is the state of things and this is what we have to do and the different um, approaches to science. <laughs> like there isn't enough, there is enough. One study contradicts another. No, it's clear. This is, you know, that was just a really fascinating yeah. to hear that. Um, it's true. It seems there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there that is diametrically opposed to what EPA has published, mm -hmm. and certainly different from the MSDS sheets. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not required to. No one's required to study the active ingredient along with all the other stuff that's in the product that actually gets used. Are you, are you talking about Roundup's 
specifically? Well, I, I think it's true of pesticides in general. The active ingredient is what's required to be tested for at least. Correct. And so anything else that's added to make it more effective in actual use doesn't have to be tested along with the active ingredient. So to me, that's a huge um, loophole. And most things are not tested for long periods of time. So how would you know if you know it had long-term consequences? Because if you're testing laboratory animals of high exposure, short amount of time, that tells you something, but it doesn't necessarily. So I, I don't think that's that's the purview of this committee to decide you know how dangerous these things are. We only know that there is a lot of concern about health effects, and nobody thinks that these things are healthy. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody in their right mind would say that pesticides are healthy for Although we're starting to see some creep into the table that, you know, the corn meal is mm -hmm. one, and then there's thyme oil is used. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things starting to come up, and then that um, VTI, you know, the soil bacteria. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things in there, but not too many. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, are there, uh, are there, oh, hi, Sherry. Hi. Sorry. I was down at the driver's licenses for all press conference and couldn't believe it. So we have already started, but if you yeah. would like to make a public comment, we will reserve time for you. No, I just, um, I wasn't able to get to either of the other two, and I heard about this one, and then last night at the um, council debate, I was very interested in what David Murphy had to say about being superintendent of Child's Park, and so I, and I had heard people saying that they found out lots of stuff by coming, so I said, well, I need to be there at six, and I should Come here. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming. So yeah, we have already started the meeting. We were just uh, uh, wrapping up a conversation about the forums. We've had two forum public forums now. You were saying something. Um, uh, I wanted to um, maybe, if we have enough time on our agenda, to maybe go a little deeper into what some of the uh, particular things are that struck us from. Um, what was going on. I mean, I know we already kind of started doing that, but I wanted to say something about the um, comment that we heard from Marty Dagoberto, who is the uh, policy person for NOFA, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it's something that I have read about consistently, and everyone that I've talked to that does organic management of both turf and um, in farming and uh, the pollinator folks, a lot of them talk about how it's really important not to just ban one particular substance because you're always, um, people will find another thing to use that could be potentially just as harmful. And that what the goal of, the way that we're, people really steeped in organic management think is more about um, instituting um, rules around organic management or pesticide free management mm -hmm. so that you know if we decide if we were to decide as a committee that we want to ban Roundup in all municipal the use of Roundup um, likely what would happen is that the people currently using Roundup in the city would find an alternative chemical mm -hmm. so um, that was something that struck me in particular and reminded me that I just wanted to kind of highlight because I think as we move forward with our recommendations we should really be thinking along similar lines so that was one thing that really struck me um, from one of the hearings yeah I think that is a really excellent point and um, he did also highlight the fact that there's a number of bills in the legislature and um, a couple of them specifically address glyphosate. Uh, and that's my concern about those bills. Um, I mean, I, I would guess that the chemical, that Monsanto, for example, um, sees the writing on the wall that um, Roundup is, with all these jury verdicts nowadays, that Roundup is gonna have a tarnished reputation and they're probably already developed something worse you know well they sold it 
to bear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so bear problem. maybe has right. already developed something that has a completely different ingredient, but could, for all we know, be, be worse in terms of its impact on uh, living things and the environment. But anyway, I think that's yeah. a really good point. So, um, so any recommendation that we make should be not about a specific chemical. I, that's my feeling. I mean, I think as we, um, you know, in, in meetings to come, we talk more concretely about what our recommendations are. And I think that, mm -hmm. you know, we should really look at that a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to highlight was um, discussion. Ed Bourgeois talked about. Um, a farmer in North Dakota, whose farm I actually had, got to visit when I was working on a project. Really? Um, yeah, I was wow. really excited. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he top. has 6,000 acres that he farms organically, and um, he's making a better profit than people, than neighboring farms that are mm -hmm. using con conventional. And we, we got schooled on that, not to use mm -hmm. the concept of conventional, but chemical farming, as mm -hmm. it were. Um, and that it really is, and the, the reason that I think it's interesting is, is that it's really more about kind of shifting culturally than, um, and, and not relying on the same old tropes of, um, you know, this, we have to do this because it's, it's a way to remain profitable. It's a way to be able to um, produce more food. We need to produce more food to meet demands. And so, um, that's, that's interesting too, and I don't know how we can use that, but it's really about shifting culturally more than, um, I think, a kind of scientific reality or, or a you know, research-based reality. Mm. Good point. I think it would be very helpful to hear um, about your review of what other municipalities have done, Cynthia. Um, so that we kind of <coughs> put Northampton into a context. I and mean, we've now heard a lot of concerns from the public, and we have heard from each of our city departments about what they are doing. Um, what, uh, what, have, what have you learned from others, other municipalities? Yeah, so what I'm going to do is um, <coughs> It's always a challenge for me to take minutes. Mm, do you want me to do the but but what I thought I'd do is that I'm gonna give you a handout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I will talk off of it. Mm -hmm. And this can be attached to the minutes. Okay. Does that make sense? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, So if there's something that you want in the minutes that's not in the handout, yeah. just um, um, at least it has her computer open. Oh, Jim does too. Maybe one of them could just take minutes for those a few minutes. Minutes for those minutes. Um, so let me take it from the top here. Um, policies in Massachusetts, there are few. Do you have one more? Oh, I'm sorry. For, I oh, 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 for, uh, for Sharon. Um, policies in Massachusetts, there are few. Okay, not many of all the towns that we have. So I just need to sorry. state that out front. Um, I think we need to pay, pay attention to the origin of the policy. By that I mean, where is it coming from? Is it Board of Health? Is it the City Council? Is it the Board of Select? Knowing that all cities and towns operate a little differently, um, clearly operate a little differently. So I just want to put that out there. Most of the ones um, are appear to be Board of Health, just so you know. Hmm. Um, Marblehead is considered the premier policy. I've already um, put that in the minutes. It's uh, posted in our minutes. Um, you know, we could do something else about, I have a copy of it here, just so you know. Um, so it's something to work off of. Um, but there is a range. <laughs> there is a, a range of, okay, we, um, we don't want to harm the public, so let's all be careful, to Marblehead. <laughs> okay, so there's this huge, um, varying approaches to the issue. Um, I'm saying the umbrella of a mass law. There is a Massachusetts state law, sorry to put the number down, I think you are familiar with it, that gives us this overall like, okay, you better be careful, pesticides or you know, use of fertilizer, et cetera. It's um, by no means something that we can say, look at, this is a Massachusetts state law, but a lot of the 
policies are saying, okay, based on EPA, based on this, based on that, they're quoting this particular law. Mm. It's readily available. It's about 20 pages long. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, I thought people would be familiar with it. Otherwise, I can pull it up and um, I forget the number of it. Yeah, if you could just send that. Yeah. Um, so let me do that. Um, I discovered um, in the search of stuff, just want to make a note here. Um, that every single school in the Commonwealth, including Northampton, including Smith Volk, has to have a pesticide policy, has to list all the pesticides that they're using, has to say how they're using, has to talk about, I mean, it's pretty detailed. I have, I brought Smith Volk's and I brought Northampton High Schools because I'm sort of interested in the turf at Northampton High School. So it's, you know, pretty big. Um, and, um, I noticed that this particular policy for Northampton High School was recently updated on September 23rd. Um, and the um, primary contact is Tony. Uh -huh. so it's, okay, so I think we had a meeting before September 23rd um, where we invited the departments. But there's a long list of things. Um, that are being used, not Captain High and Smith Boat, but we can do leads. We can use do every single daycare. We can do Cutchin School. They're all there. And there, you mean on the internet? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and what what they're supposed to be responding to is the compliance with the Act protecting children and families from harmful pesticides. Generally speaking, that Act is saying if you're going to apply, you must notify. Okay, and um, and there's a process for doing that. There's a separate policy or procedural thing for each school within a school district, or every school, every school. Well, I I actually today looked up the Family and Children <laughs> Protection Act, which From is harmful pe pesticides. Yeah, which is what you're referring to. Yeah. and I read it on my phone, so it was you know it wasn't perfect, but it starts out saying that every um, school has to have an IPM policy. Yes. That's that's what this is. That's what you probably so right. that's what you have. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you you actually okay great. Yeah. So what is um, IPM is based on? You don't use chemical pesticides unless something else doesn't work, right? Unless a harmless I, substance doesn't what work. What does IPM right? stand for? Integrated pest management. Yeah. And it's it's basically a term that. Um, got created so that people would be aware of the concept of using fewer pesticides, but there's no, it's not like organic management where there's a certifying body. Mm -hmm. So basically it's been turned into whatever people want. So a lot of people talk about using IPM, uh -huh. um, but it, it can look like basically anything because it allows for the use of pesticides, but, but don't supposedly- you to, But you have to justify it. I know. So so does that this, this no. policy that you pulled up tell us what it says? Does no, it does it justify? Well, it, it has a, it has a policy statement and it says this is just the high school. Yep. Yep. Um, high school. Okay. There's so many schools in oh, the yeah. But so the high school by far has way more than anybody else. But uh, by far has way more what? Pesticides. Oh, okay. in your yeah. IPM plan. So structural and lands. Oh, oh, by the way, you have to have an indoor plan. That's right. And, and you have to have an outdoor plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this idea of what is IPM is really, like Elisa said, it, even with the town and city policies, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. To find it however, I, I don't know if there's one true definition. Are those things that they use, is that what's in the IPM? Tell us what's in it. Well, what's just so the policy thing? statement for Northampton High School mm -hmm. is as follows, structural and landscape pests can pose significant problems for people and property. Pesticides can pose risks to people, property, and the environment. It's therefore the policy of this school to incorporate integrated pest management procedures for control of structural and landscape pests. The objective of this program is to provide necessary pest control while minimizing pesticide use. So, um, they, they talk about having a committee, and they name the people who are on this committee. Um, but let me get to which everyone has. So they have a turf management plan. 
they outline the, the insects that are that they want to be careful of. They have a water management plan, a fertilization. When I say a plan, I'm talking about a paragraph. Um, they have a section on record keeping. All these sections are required. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll, they're just going down the template, right? Um, evaluating the program. Um, notification requirements on exemptions. So just about everything has an exemption or a waiver. Even the Marblehead policy does. Okay, these are, these are the times when we could apply. Okay. Um, uh, in event of the health emergency, list of pesticides to be used outside the facility. Um, so they list them, they talk about what is the pest. Um, insecticides, weeds, herbicides, they list those. Um, how they maintain their equipment. There are some sections they haven't filled in, how they monitor um, course of action. They do have course of action taken for outdoor pets, pests um, under turf. They said the athletic fields are our priority areas of maintenance. And then they say it again, the priority area for maintenance is the athletic fields. Are they talking about how the application applicator person is being protected in 2020? No, no, no. I'm mean, just. Uh, well, it's True Green that has the contract, so their pesticide, they're licensed. Whether they're adequately protecting themselves, who knows? Yeah, but they're licensed, so they should know. So they list the. But does it say anything about? My understanding is you you, uh, you have to get an emergency exemption if you're going to spray while there are any children yeah. on the and premises a or of time. within a couple of days, yeah. something like that. Five days, yeah. So if they're going to go out and spray for wasps, do they get an exemption? And how do they get their exemption? Does, I, is there I, that documented? I, I, it's not in this document. Okay. But I think, um, I think a city or a town can say, can designate what the exemptions are, mm -hmm. and then that there's some policies that I'll go through that in order to get that exemption, or sometimes you use the word waiver, you've got to go through the Board of Health mm -hmm. to get that waiver or exemption. Right. Um, but this is a, you know, a template that they're, that they're, um, they're following. And um, I think some of the loopholes in it, it's, you know, who oversees this, who looks at it, you sort of put together your own committee of, you know, folks and that, you know, they're ticking up the boxes, so to speak, so. Cynthia, for all those lists of pesticides that they have for each school, do you know what the 25B exempt product is referring to? Because they have that indoor and outdoor for almost every school. I don't, I don't know. I sent that link, by the way, just so people know to Kate. Um, you might be plowing through it or something. I certainly am. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah, I, 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 would lo I would love to have it also, just yeah. to have it. But no. You know what, I'm actually putting them all into the table. Oh, great. Oh, are you kidding me? All those schools? I've got them all in except for the high school. That's the dunk Even one. the private ones? No, 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 yeah, no okay. just Northampton. Leeds Bridge. Hey, exactly. they're putting all the chemicals that they're using? That they're or using that IPM, a, those IPM plants. Okay, that's a... The pesticides that are listed. The, bank the plans, like as a denda to the chart that you created? Well, she has. It, yeah, that's so table. much to I'm just, I mean, I don't know. Because we can. had some of them already in there that they said they were using, oh, but dear. it turns out there are a lot more. Oh, really? Surprise, surprise. I mean, yeah. a ton more in the high school. Oh, so you're looking at, all right, all right well, I'm just trying to see where they're listing them. They, they do use diatomaceous earth, so that's Right, a, I that's put that in that's Mother Earth D, right? I put that in there, too, because that, that's a that's desiccant. The, that's the 25B exemption. Exem, 25B exemption. So. Yes, I believe, I believe it's considered safe. Because on some of them, it was there, and then it was also the 25B exempt product. Okay, well, we're going to need to find out what that means. Right. right. I, I, I didn't do anything with it. I just have it sitting there. Okay. All these I think it's good for us to have all of this material for sure, but I don't want us to get too deep yeah, into the... Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. You feel the so quicksand. Does, so to speak. Did anybody so get my speak, I got yeah. it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. I was so, just reading about weeds here. <laughs> 
I, yeah, uh, that, Cindy, um, you mentioned there's a committee oh, yeah. that oversees this. Yeah. Is the committee active? Does it list who those it's people are? It's supposed to be, yes, it does list who it is. Um, it says uh, it's, it's, right now it's, and it's two people. Elisa Tony, has, who is here, right. and, and Roland are the two people. So Smith the Oak has six. This Tim is the, Smith. Uh, Andrew Linkhoker, who's the su superintendent, Crystal Fairman, don't know who that is, Heather Bully, Jared Betancourt, Joe Bianco. So they've got six people at Smith Oak. Hmm. Every, every school will have different people, generally. Am I forgetting? This is, this is really interesting. interesting. Smith Oak is in our area, is it? But we're not sure. Yeah, I'm we're just, sure. I'm just oh, okay. giving you the whole kind of picture here. And again, I don't want to, I don't know what chemical is exempt or not and how they're using it and how we can prove it. And this, this is some of the um, pitfalls of, of getting into this kind of work. But this is why I think we don't, again, we're not, we're not technicians, we're not yeah. scientists, we don't need to know. I think, I think for me, the takeaway from this, and I think it's a really valid project, I don't, I'm not mm -hmm. taking away from that, is that we're, we're getting a sense of how much pesticide is used regularly in mm -hmm. all aspects of how this city is managed. And, um, and that even though we had people come and talk to us about what their departments are doing, I think, you know, they, they might have a different sense of what a pesticide is. And so it wasn't included in their presentation. Or I'm not saying that anybody is deliberately lying to us, but I do think you know, it's kind of like what Sharon alluded to and we mentioned uh, when we started the meeting at the debate last night when David Murphy says, as the manager of Child's Park, that he doesn't use almost any pesticide when I know how much pesticide is used, people have different kind of gauges of what it means to use a lot or a little. And so it's not our job to kind of pick through each of the chemicals as much as to understand that we have to figure out how we're um, affecting change and reducing. So mm -hmm. there does seem to be a culture of pesticide use in the school department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think throughout the city, yeah. Wow. So maybe to, just to give us a little hope here, okay? <laughs> hope? Is that what you said? Hope? Yeah. Um, yeah. And if we could just maybe continue on this sheet. What what I've listed here, um, Marblehead, Wellesley, Andover, Newburyport, Eastern, and Chatham, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I have copies of all those, et cetera. But um, you can see Marblehead as a board of health. Wesley's policy comes from what they call the Natural Resource Commission, mm -hmm. um, Andover's Board of Health. Newburyport just says it's an ordinance, and that's the brand new one that just came out. Um, Eastham is a Board of Selectmen policy, or select people policy. Um, Newton, what they did was um, they just established a committee, we hereby mm -hmm. established this committee. Um, Chatham is an interesting story, and I have a phone call into them because I want to see what's kind of going on there. Um, they have a policy, but then the minutes of their, mm, are they a city council? Are they a city or a town? I don't know. I think it's a city. Um, town, Chatham's a town. Chatham's a town, okay. In their, in, their, um, in their minutes, they had a motion in 2018 um, to the Board of Health to eliminate Roundup in those words. Mm -hmm. And they, they made a motion and said, oh my God, we have all this study now. We have all this evidence. We better make sure the Board of Health includes Roundup in their policy. Um, and I don't see any um, indication that they did. Yeah. So I have a phone call, into, but I don't know, you know what, what the outcome that is. Um, so I have some notes there. The middle column is about, um, I saw a trend of advisory committees. We need to set up an advisory committee. Now these committees, as I read the policies, have a range of responsibility and some are, um, um, I'll say advisory committee light, and some are, these are the people that are gonna be on it. This is who they report to. This is what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to tell, in some cases, the Board of Health if they find a violation. Mm. You know, there's 
Just violation a, of what? Uh, uh, of any of the, the regulation, okay? Mm. A violation of the regulation. Somebody is doing something. But these are places that don't have regulations in place? No. Everyone has it. I'm sorry, you're looking at something that I'm... Well, you're saying here the advisory committees like Wellesley or yeah. Andover, but, but do they have... I mean, if they haven't passed ordinances or the they've Board of Health passed. hasn't issued... They've all passed. You see an issue? Well, if, they, if it's a Board of Health action, then they don't have to pass an ordinance, right? Well, you because have to pass... Board, right. The Board of Health has its own ability to regulate. Right, but what I'm talking about right now is the role of an advisory committee. There's a range of these roles. Mm -hmm. Okay? Does that make sense? Uh -huh. or so regardless of who is established the advisory committee, yeah. there's yeah. A, they have a range of roles of that mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But you have, so you don't have where there's an, like Wellesley, for instance, mm -hmm. it says that there's an advisory committee, but we don't know what they're advising on because they don't, they haven't passed an ordinance or the Board of Health hasn't passed an ordinance that says what they're actually. But you're focusing too much on the Board of Health. They have a policy. It's a natural, natural resource commission policy. Yeah. And they have an advisory committee within that policy. But what are they advising is what I don't understand. Oh, oh. On the, on the policy? A range of things like, um, Education, community outreach. What are the things that we're looking for? So not necessarily ordinance. That's what I'm trying to get at. I, I don't know what because I don't know the, what an okay, so NRC yeah. commission does. Okay, so, so we, we, we could find know. we could find out whether Wellesley has ever passed an actual ordinance that establishes this advisory committee, for example, that says because the way I remember it, when I five uh, years ago when I talked to Wellesley, yeah. They they uh, they had gone to completely organic management of their all all of their um, city owned land. Now, I assumed mm -hmm. that they had an ordinance. I uh, recall I that they passed what they called an IPM plan, which allowed for oh. pesticide use in Wellesley. But that's so that's what I'm I'm just trying to get at because this is a select committee of the city council. The city council is the legislative branch. We can pass ordinances. Let's just use an example that all parks and playing fields are managed organically. So that that's what we would pass. And we might also pass something that's like a companion piece to it that says we would have an advisory committee that um, checks up that it's being observed or something like that. But mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out, like we could create an advisory committee by law, by legislation, by ordinance, but if we're not enforcing a particular management style or the, the you know, getting rid of the use of glyphosate, what is it actually well, enforcing is well, what I'm I concerned think, about. I think you're, again, I want to reiterate, an advisory committee and these policies have a range of responsibilities. Now let me just read Wellesley's Advisory Committee. Mm. They shall be created to oversee and assist in the implementation of the IPM policy, which is from the NRC, policy. to develop an IPM program consistent with the policy, and to assist the town of Wellesley departments to achieve full and successful implementation of this policy. In addition, their duties are going to include creating a turf management plan, compiling a registry of all the pesticides that are being used in the town, ensure the town is, um, uh, the, the town's compost is tested on a yearly basis for contaminants, ensure the town water is tested for pesticides, ensure the town employees who work with these items are protected. So that's all this committee is doing, you know, and who they report to, how compliance occurs I, in the town of Wellesley, I don't know because it's not written here. They, and that's why under this sort of enforcement thing here, I have several policies where there's no mention of how this is going to be enforced. Mm. No mention of any um, procedure, mm. of uh, procedure of complaint, which is something we always do in the Board of Health. This is, if you need a complaint, this is how you do it, you know. Mm. Um, and now some of them are fine, as you can see here. So 
this advisory committee thing is, um, you know, I don't want to jump ahead of my skis and say we need to make a recommendation on an advisory committee, but it does. It, it does get a group of people together. And some are just community, not, not just, but community members that are just sort of advising. And others have a very strict role. It's, you have to have a rep from the Board of Health. You have to have a rep from the school department. You have to have a rep from here. And this is their charge. So if we wanted to go down that road. When we talked about recommendations in the past, in past meetings, we did throw out this idea of creating some kind of established committee that would oversee things. We didn't go as far as saying what their roles could be yeah. or what exactly they would do. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, I'm not sure if we talked about this, just uh, Councillor Nash and myself, or if we talked about it as a group, but we talked about the possibility of using a standing committee of the city council that would have in its purview this kind of work or something along those lines. But these kind of advisory committees, I mean, we can create it by law, or we can make a recommendation to the mayor and it would be a mayoral committee or commission, but that would take it out of the hands of the legislative branch. So it's kind of an interesting model and I am curious, you know, how they're created, if they're created by ordinance or if they're their mayor or town manager or whatever oversees them. So you're you're asking that question mm -hmm. of the towns where the board of it's not a board of health issue. Because four of these say origin, Board of Health, mm -hmm. and the Board of Health can establish its own regulations independent of the mayor or the city council or anything. So Newton has representation, a committee was established, uh, Wellesley has their advisory committee. So those are the two, I guess, that have kind of committees and we don't quite know. I mean, the reason that I'm being, um, very specific here, and I'm sorry that we're, we're kind of talking across purposes a little bit, is that, again, because this is a select committee of the city council, I'm really right. interested in what the city council can have the purview over mm -hmm. as opposed to hand, just making a recommendation that could or could not be followed up by the mayor. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's where my interest lies, is what can we actually codify and put in place? Mm -hmm. right. So it needs to be something that the city council has purview over. That's my preference because that way we know that it's going to happen. Right. And our report is going to the city council, so it's the city council that would do something about our report if, right, if anything's going to happen. And maybe to your point, the Premier Marblehead um, Advisory Committee, <clears throat> um, they call it the OPM, Organic. Management. Oh, OPM. Oh, OPM. Shall be formed, which shall advise the Board of Health as to all matters arising out of or in connection with this regulation. Whenever practical, the director and or the Board of Health shall consult with the advisory committee prior to the granting of any waivers under another one of their sections. So they have this, you know, they have their waivers listed, but before they give a waiver, they want to get this committee's kind of okay. The committee, um, it says, the membership in the OPM advisory committee shall be at the pleasure of the Board of Health. Mm, so so it's appointed by the Board yeah, of Health. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. um, it should be composed of representatives from the general public, elected town officials, appointed town officials and town employees as the Board of Health may determine from time to time. So that's why I'm saying this this committee has taken all kinds of different forms in these policies. Uh -huh. okay. So this is directly related to um, an email that I sent to the city solicitor this week and mm -hmm. I did CC Adele, mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to actually share it um, I couldn't send it beyond because of open meeting law, but I think it's really important for us to have an answer from the city solicitor so we can understand the city council's purview in terms of 
the Board of Health and still the school committee, we're still, um, we still haven't gotten an answer from the city solicitor about that, but I'm trying to pull it up and my um, internet went down, so. But I don't think you, you didn't ask him about the Board of Health. You I asked did, him. I asked about both. Oh, okay, I didn't, re I didn't remember. Excellent, that. let's hear it. Uh, but I, 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 I would guess that we don't have any purview over the Board of Health because they're pretty independent. Well, but here's the we'll confusing see. thing is that the reason that I wrote to him this week was because um, I, I sent to him the um, Newburyport pass in late August pass a, a no glyphosate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it, could we just explain that before you go on to, to your email? What does that mean? N Newburyport passed an ordinance to ban the use of glyphosate and that's it? Yes, and what, what is really curious about it and, what I, and the reason I wrote to the city solicitor is the Board of Health regulates it and enforces it and can impose a $500 fine on any, any department or anyone that uses it in the municipality. Mm. So I'm really curious about how they could pass an ordinance mm. that essentially engages the Board of Health as the enforcer because mm it's a state appointed board we don't have purview over the board of health here in the city council so that's what i was asking him how they okay. may have passed this and it doesn't seem like it's been challenged so mm -hmm. i'm assuming well, that I think, it's in effect i think it's because what they did was i have a policy right here is that they um again this is a city okay mm -hmm. and um be it ordained by the city council, the city of Newburyport as follows. And they specifically talk about glycogen. But they said the Newbury Board of Health, pursuant to Mass General, which gives this particular law, gives the Board of Health this power. Um, the Newbury Board of Health may make reasonable health regulations and furthermore, um, they make regulations for the public health and safety relevant relative nuisances and cause of sickness. The Board of Health, by and through its health director, is hereby designated as the enforcement agency. But this is what I mean. Like, how can the city council pass an ordinance that designates the Board of Health as right. anything? Well, but the health thing. director. I don't know. So the health director and then is different than the board. Yeah. Okay, but what does it say there? Does it say the health director or the board? It's the health director. So Who is given the health the director? director Meredith O'Leary. They've given the health director responsibility for enforcement. Because the health director probably in Newburyport, if it's like ours, has this group of people who are enforcement people. Mm. I mean, I think the city oh, could have, have said, you know, maybe said it's the police department's <laughs> responsibility. But they said they're going to use the resources of the health department. So this says Board of Health. Is that not yeah. right? Board of Health to regulate, and maybe regulate's a bad word, enforce the $500 fine because they have non-criminal disposition. So the question is, can we, can we have a city employee? We designate, the city council would designate a city employee, and the city employee then uses her or his yeah. board of health to be the enforcer. Yeah. That's, so that's the yeah, question. Yeah, it's a good question. Now. It's a good question. I mean, so what I wrote to Alan Seawald is, I'm attaching here an ordinance recently passed by the city council in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Um, I'm not so interested in the content in terms of its ban on glyphosate. I don't think that's the direction that we're going to necessarily go in. But I'm interested in this law's statement of the council's authority to one, mandate how school grounds are managed, and, re and assign responsibility for the law's implementation to the city's Board of Health, which is essentially a state-mandated body over which the city council does not have authority. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that's what we need to find out. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes laws get passed, and oh, yeah. it takes a while for places to kind of, you know, someone has to challenge it to, for them to see that there's some kind of invalid piece of it and here in Northampton we're extraordinarily conscientious before we pass these laws so until we get some kind of ruling back from Alan and I haven't heard back from him in several days mm -hmm. um, I, I would be worried about any kind of legislation that we might pass mm -hmm. that would have a similar kind of direction mm -hmm. yeah I mean I don't think we're at the point of making those 
Yeah. Mm, fascinating. They do, I mean, the city of Newport, Newburyport, this is an ordinance to establish the regulation of the use of glyphosate. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Right. And they're saying their purview is all city-owned lands, including school property. Oh, and that's the other part of the question that I asked. So this, yeah. this yeah. dividing line that we keep hearing about, it's the school. We can't touch it. I, I don't know. I'm not really seeing that. I think our initial our initial mm -hmm. input from the city from the mayor really more than the city solicitor that we can't create policy the city council can't create policy citywide that also affects the schools is actually inaccurate but we'll find out hopefully we will find out quick enough that we can actually get something done before the end of the city council term yeah <laughs> so um, did you were you going to read something I did. Okay. That was okay. okay. Um, so just some of the should I go on? Mm -hmm. um, so just some of the features of the policy, which is under the grid, the, or the table that's up there. Uh, we talked a little bit about fines and enforcement. Um, in a couple of email conversations, um, you know, this is always the tricky thing. How do you enforce? And one of the tricky things we're running into with the Board of Health as we consider smoking in public is um, this non-criminal disposition authority that we have. Um, how do you find a person who works for you? You know, how do you find the person in DPW who's applying whatever he or she was told to apply, perhaps by a boss or Hey, the term it, is not an individual. Yeah, it's just. Or they hire a contractor to do it. it yeah. Well, that's okay. yeah. I mean, so this is where it gets a little like it's. I I, mm -hmm. I don't know of any fines that have been issued. I didn't explore that. But what is that circumstance when we find at the Board of Health a restaurant that's an entity? Mm -hmm. You know, right. um, and because that's or you know that's what we're looking for. So um, I'm not sure how that will all work. Um, but there, it, it, it probably is good to have as a component in the policy some type of enforcement language and who's going to do it? Because right now we have some things in the Board of Health who are like, well, isn't that the police? No, that's you. <laughs> you know, yeah. So there's that issue. Um, I think we've been through the number two, the advisory committees talking about that a lot. Um, who are these people? What can they do? What power do they have? Um, I think they can be helpful. It's like having a group of people in our two forums that advise somebody about the latest in, in um, IPM or OPM. Um, the definitions, you know, um, most policies are like, this is a definition of public land, this is a definition of OPM, this is a definition of, um, there was BPM, B BMP, Best Management Practices. So they're defining these, so that's another feature of these. Um, some of the policies talk about educating the public as a responsibility um, and how that's done, who does it, who's responsible for that is, you know, um, still to be determined by city or town. Um, standardization in terms of school departments doing one thing, DPW is doing another thing, someone else is doing something else, you know, how to get this standardized under one policy. It can be problematic. Um, the regulation of the practices, how do you actually know or see when things are being done? Is there a schedule? Is there something that people can go against to know that the pesticide is going to be applied at these different times? And some of the policies go into that detail, particularly in turf management stuff. So we're going to, like one policy said, okay, the grass is going to be four inches high. And, you know, they went down to that level of detail. Um, licensure, um, many of the policies talk about you cannot put this stuff on unless you're a licensed applicator. And anyone you hire must be a licensed applicator. Um, I, I, I thought it was interesting about community outreach into this town of Townsend, which doesn't have a policy, although it's listed as doing stuff on the Beyond Pesticide website. Um, they have an organic lawn demonstration site they actually have set up in the town to show people how they can do this. 
that it's not crazy and wild. It's not a like Florence Fields here. Yeah, maybe. But in, in where is which town is it? Townsend? Townsend. Yeah. Where's was that? Northampton included <laughs> with mention of our management of Florence Fields on the map? No. Interesting. No. It, it's interesting also the um, what's your say use for if you came on Yeah, we don't want to go there, but what's her name, the head of the head of DPW? Donna. Donna. When Donna told us that they had switched to organic mass uh, management for every athletic field, park, and recreation area except for the high school football field, I was amazed because I don't think people know that. Mm -hmm. Well, the term organic management is misused. The fact that they're trying not to use, it's not certified organic, the, uh -huh. their, the management, and that's mm -hmm. something that we have to define if we do any kind of legislation. Uh -huh. They just, I think what she means is that they're trying not to use, I know this for a fact because I've talked to Rich Parcelletti who actually does the management of turf, mm. that they're trying very hard to use as little pesticide as possible, but they always reserve the option of using pesticide, and they do sometimes. So, they're not doing organic management because it's not certified organic management. It's not certified. And you're saying that, in fact, they do sometimes use pesticides, yes. chemical pesticides. Yes. Okay. Well, that's disciplining. Um, so, so that could be one of our recommendations is that the, the, the organically managed areas get certified so that, in fact, we know for sure that they are that being years. years. Pardon me? It's a matter of years. Before yeah, three years of Oh, yeah. Well, uh, they three years can of record use people. certified methodologies. We're not talking about farmland where you get certification that what is grown um, is has that takes years. But what so we're talking about is you can immediately start using certified organic management techniques. So that's okay. different. Even the woman who spoke at the forum said she has I don't know was it an acre land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who said, I do this and this and this and actually grows. I mean, that's an example, mm -hmm. you know, through community outreach and education. Mm -hmm. um, so then finally, um, this exemption thing, every single policy has an exemption. Mm -hmm. So even though we're saying you can't use it, these are the times that you can. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'll just just quickly go through the premier Marblehead, Marblehead exemptions where um, um, pesticides otherwise lawfully used for the purpose of maintaining a safe drinking water supply um, at drinking water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants. Um, pest, these are exemptions. Pesticides in contained baits or traps for the purpose of rodent control. Pesticides classified by the US EPA as exempt materials under a particular um, law. Um, or those pesticides of a character not requiring FIFRA regulation. I don't know what FIFRA is. I don't know what FIFRA is. The FIFRA. Oh, I just read about it. Hold on. I think it's right here. But, um, very interesting here, it says any waiver that's granted in excess of 30 days as to... Excess of 30 days? Any waiver in excess of 30 days as to any one emergency may be extended for an additional time, not to exceed six months, but only by a vote from the Board of Health. So they're really pinning down, you know, when these waivers occur and you have to post a notice of the waiver, so many business days, you know, they're really like, if you're gonna do this, you better let everybody know. So the, grant a waiver. the 30 day thing is unclear to me. Is that you're going to be using it for 30 days, the pesticide, or? Any waiver in excess of 30 days. I would say that if you granted a waiver. That's how many days you have to do it, maybe. Yeah. Or, or maybe you need to do it a few times within 30, I, I don't know. Right. I can't. Okay, but it, um, okay, but but anytime you use anytime you want to use a pesticide, you have to get a waiver. Yes, so, so, yeah. and the criteria for that waiver is the pest situation poses a threat to human or animal health and environmental quality. <laughs> Just kind of a moving target that concept, but or yeah. after reasonable OPM methods have been exhausted, and 
we still have the problem. And viable alternatives consistent with this regulation do not exist. So those are the three criteria that they have for their waivers. <coughs> so that, um, that would imply that you would have to have documentation that A, you've tried yeah. to use blah, blah, and it didn't work, and that there is a health problem, mm -hmm. and, um, and there's no other alternative. But I think, um, yeah, and, and in light of the spirit of the conversation, though we're not getting in the weeds, so to speak, just like if we were to make a recommendation, that waiver or that exemption feature might be in the recommendation. That would be written into a piece of legislation yeah. for sure. Yeah. But we don't you need know, to legislate it. We just need to say, probably need to have those. You know? Sounds like Marblehead also assigned authority ultimately to the Board of Health. I mean, it says here yes, that the enforcement is the Board of Health. So again, we have a model of a piece of legislation that's been it since 1994, is it? Um, well, um, um, they had a 2001, this is 2005, this is their last okay. action. <coughs> so it's been around for longer than 10 years and it hasn't been challenged and they um, designated responsibility to the Board of Health. So that's um, did they designate responsibility to the Board of Health or did the Board of Health come up with the regulation to start out with? It's a Board of Health regulation. Yeah, so, so the, um, oh I see. It you came straight from the Board of Health. FIFRA, by the way, is that big federal um, legislation around pesticides. It's the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. <laughs> federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. The federal law that sets up basic U.S. system of pesticide regulation to protect applicators, consumers, and the environment. That's fascinating. Um, it doesn't say, it doesn't mention herbicide. It doesn't mention well, well federal insecticide, fungicide, and rodenticide act. It doesn't talk about herbicides. <laughs> from 1972. Oh. No, it was affected. 1910. <laughs> but it was significantly created essentially in 1972. Um. So just a, a, sort of in closing, I could. Um, And I dipped a little bit in a couple other states, but I don't think it will serve us well. I mean, I just I thought, let me just zero in on Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that there's anybody standing out or anything, but the language continues to <laughs> kind of go in all kinds of directions, and it's probably worded in accordance with their state laws, and boards of health have different powers in different places. And so um, I thought we'd just stick with this, you know, until we yeah. the presentation. Yeah. Um, IPDFs and copies of all the policies. I don't know what's necessary, what is necessary to attach to minutes or anything like that, or if we go uh, just attach this report. Um, so there's a range of directions. And are there any, should I pursue anything else or go into? Um, do you have a copy of the East Ham yeah. policy? Because mm -hmm. That one, well, it was selectman, it wasn't the city council, but um, it seems like the that, legislative branch, though, yeah. that the legislative branch, rather than these other ones that are boards of health or the Natural Resource Commission. That's um, a good point. And I don't know, I don't know whether, do you think Newton's policy was established by their city council? Because it says committee established, but who established it? Was it the city council, do you think? I'm if you have to tell. time, one thing Newton's I have. I'm not. No, 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 But I have a good friend who serves on the city council in Newton, and she's also the president of the Sierra, Club, the Massachusetts Sierra Club chapter. Um, and I would bet she knows this up and down, and I could give you contact information for her, Cindy, if you're interested in looking more deeply at Newton. Um, I mean, Newton, it's just, it's kind of interesting the way it's laid out and what I've copied. There's, Does it say like the office of the mayor no, or the, the office of the city of, of Newton? You know, it doesn't even say so it. It, 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 must be, it must be the city council that did it. Not necessarily a policy. Well, does that mean it's not a in the oh, yeah. It from could the be the mayor's office if it's a policy oh, about oh, how oh, departments okay. manage things. But that's that's an interesting question. Okay, so um, and you were talking about Easton too. 
And then, yeah, Eastham says the Board of Selectmen, um, or the Select Board, excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, I actually know somebody who's on, the, I'm pretty sure she's on the Select Board in East Town. She's certainly involved in East Town. Joanna Buffington. Um, it's called Date of Adoption by East Town Board of Select. So, uh, but that was way back in 2013. She yes. might not have been on the board then. But I, I can just shoot her an email and just ask her. But um, what's her name? Emily Norton? Yep. Um, by the way, she doesn't work for the Sierra Club anymore. Oh, since when? She, Quite a while. It's a couple of years. Um, a year plus. But anyway, that's that's irrelevant. Um, uh, but she is still a city councilor. Uh, she's fabulous. Um, okay. So I had a thought, a question. So, um, so Cindy, in terms of, so. In any of these circumstances, are people like getting their plans approved through some sort of, like the board, you know, in other words, because I'm thinking of it from the point of view of what Elisa is looking at is, you know, what can council legislate? Mm -hmm. And that um, in terms of, you know, so we approve budgets, you know, that the management side then goes and mm -hmm. takes care of. And I'm wondering if there's a way, you know, like in terms of any management plans, if there's some sort of, we could create some sort of formal process as to what's your annual management plan, you know, and that it has to come through some sort of chance, you know, it needs to be approved each year or something to that effect. And then, um, and that it becomes something that gets annually reported out on, um, you know, here's, and then it also, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, that there's a lot of change that needs to happen for some of these departments, you know, because it seems like everybody's, every, yeah, everybody's got, they all have IPM, yeah. but they're all doing different IPM. Right. And that, exactly. and that by having a system that. where, where everybody's like, you know, oh, I got to pull my IPM together and oh, and here's where we as a city are aiming. Mm -hmm. So I, that was my thought, is if there's a way, you know, I, the, the idea that came to mind is we approve the fireworks every year, you know? <laughs> that, you know, that while it's this, this formal thing that council does, um, um, allowing, you know, the license for that to happen, that, you know, we could maybe create something similar to that that promotes the discussion. That would, I mean, people aren't going to show up and talk about fireworks and what they're made of. Maybe they should, but um, but around this, if we created that format, people would, Sharon would be here, and you know, and other folks to talk about, you know, oh, what progress have we made around the overall pest management plan for so all. So, are you saying that the city, the city council, the entire city council would be the body that would be? I'm just wondering if there's a way we could create a we being the city council we being the city council uh -huh. could yeah. create some some sort of licensing system or um, mm -hmm. kind of like the way we track the budget you know that what's the pest management system um, report for the city you know and and that maybe each everybody who has one in the city, whether it's school or, you know, grounds or whatever, they all have to come to us, you know, and it could be broad room, you know, if they're working on city lands, you know, mm -hmm. that it's just a thought. So, so, but so do any of these people, the, the other cities and towns, that they're not looking so much at the, the management systems or it's the Board of Health. What I'm trying to think of is how we can get something on the, the council side. I Maybe mean, great, the Board of Health could actually take all of this up. And, and if they were willing to. If they're willing to, right. I, we can't make any assumptions. Right, exactly. So. Um, I think it also goes back to that question that we're gonna need to get the city solicitor to weigh in on you know, what, how much purview we have to assign enforcement duties. 
So right. I think it's hard for us to kind of figure out the enforcement piece or where this is going to sit until we know that. But it sounds like none of the other cities or towns are going to that that level. That it's really relying on the board of health to to do the. Enforcement. Well, they're all they're almost all establishing some sort of a committee mm -hmm. to handle this. Mm -hmm. Um, the two exceptions seem to be the, the two ordinances that specifically talk about glyphosate. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems to me that that would be a lot to ask of the whole city council to hear all these pesticide management plans. Because, I mean, fireworks is like one thing. Mm -hmm. It's not like herbicides and fungicides and rodenticides and you know schools and conservation land and parks and blah 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 so i would think that the city council maybe i don't know maybe you guys don't have enough to do and no, you don't never. know where to do <laughs> but i would think that you'd be happier if you had if you designated um, a subcommittee or a, or a separate committee mm -hmm. that's whose job it would be to do this and then report to you right but to give them the teeth to actually pull people in oh absolutely yeah you know that mm -hmm. if it's um we approve stuff by our committee work all the time so um where the work is done by committees so and and they're specifically tasked with doing that work yeah and you know my guess is that you know, like in the case of the school system, um, and I know we keep straying to the schools, <laughs> but that, you know, that they could all, 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 you know, all of the people, man, you know, that the management of all of those schools could be pulled together and, and done in a unified way, and rather than, you know, creating, you know, six different pest management plans or that. And they could all be using, you know, the same philosophy and direction, you know, that, mm. and then that becomes a single hearing, mm -hmm. you know, and with with the committee, and the committee goes, well, thank you, you've made progress, we approve it for this year, whatever, I, you know. Mm -hmm. And maybe with some kind of a template like the ones that the schools are using, not like, but. Yeah, this like, this is already a yeah. template yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. But. The thing is, there's there's not enough accountability in here. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's none. Yeah, there's none. You know, and it looks like it's like intended to be there. You know, and that needs to be, mm -hmm. you know, there needs to be, you know, people, you know, parents from the school part of this process, and <laughs> you know, and then, yeah, the, yeah, there needs to be more oversight. <laughs> So are you saying that rather than have each school try to figure this out themselves, that there would be one whole school policy? I think if they collectively looked at it, you know, the entire school system, you know, that all of the, the different custodial um, managers are looking at their pest management and looking at it in a way that, you know, we have this goal of re reducing the amount of pesticide we use and they're, you know, they meet you know, a few times a year and talk about, you know, they get some training and they talk about how they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then they're somehow accountable for it. But the city has got to set a goal as to what it wants to do, you know. It right. wants to reduce, it wants to eliminate, it I, wants to, what, what does the city want to do? Because reducing means you have to have a benchmark, and we have no benchmark. I think there are different ways to think about a gradual process of reduction. You can think about it in terms of um, using fewer pesticides on a particular kind of um, municipal area, or you can think about it in terms of the different kinds of municipal areas that exist. We've identified for our resolution, we identified six or seven, right? right. Conservation land, watershed, which by the way, we never talked about. Um, schools, parks, um, Ag was five. Were there six or seven? I'm forgetting one. Anyway, so what? I'm just going to throw something out there, and I know that we're kind of we've descended into <laughs> the discussion, the next point on our agenda about recommendations. 
My vision as I've been kind of chewing this over because the timeline is so short in terms of um, introducing legislation to the city council, I'm, my aim is to actually have legislation presented at the same time that we present the report. So to our first meeting in November, essentially, the city council's first meeting in November. Um, and what I've been thinking about is um, talking about different, those different kinds of municipal areas and setting up some kind of timetable for a conversion of those different areas at different points. You know, in one year we will tackle the places where children play and then we will define what those are. City parks, school playing fields. Um, I think that might be it. Um, within one year, they will be converted to organic management. Within three years, we will convert our conservation. I'm just, again, talking off the top of my head here. Yep. Within three years, we will convert our conservation areas to organic management. Within six years, we will convert our ag areas to, to, to organic management. And the reason that I think it's important for us to talk about organic management is because of the point that I was making at the very beginning about how we don't want to just cut particular pesticides because other pesticides will step in, right. but also because it's going to be incredibly difficult for us and any enforcer, if it ends up being the Board of Health, that would be lovely, but for them to be measuring, you know, how much of this pesticide is okay and how much isn't, or these pesticides are okay and these aren't. Just creating that level of kind of possibility of the ongoing use of pesticides, I think, is really problematic. And so if we think about the gradual change being about the different areas in the city, but that the goal is organic management, I think that we, we have more of a plan. So that would be my kind of fantasy legislation. If that feels like too much and we're never going to get to the conservation areas or the watershed areas, then at least I think the first step, the legislation that I would really love to see us recommend and I'm happy to write for the beginning of November is um, conversion to organic management of all the places in which uh, children and youth play. So that's kind of my um, thinking and I would really love the kind of go ahead of this committee to do that, but if if people aren't comfortable with that, I may submit that legislation anyway, to be perfectly frank. <laughs> just because, just because we have a timeline issue. Unless we come up with something else, you know, on time That's for me to write something. So our November. report could be something completely different than what you introduce. No, I'm just joking. Ideally, um, no, but I know uh, it's just, just because of the time constraints. Yes, I, uh, I'm getting nervous, and literally, unless we submit it um, for the beginning of November, we won't be able to pass it yes. by the end of the term. Because well, it's by the end of your term matters, right? By the end of this particular city council this term. Council yes. term, yes, I understand. Well, I, I mean, I, okay, so um, <laughs> and I think it's very important that we include whatever legislation that we propose to have waivers and have a very well documented process yes, absolutely. Um, that if, so that if somebody wants to have a waiver they have to apply for it and it is publicly available um, yeah I think that language from Marblehead is great I mean I would lift that wholesale I think if we were to yeah. move forward with this idea right well what do you all think about <coughs> Elisa's suggestion are we moving to um, discussion of potential recommendations? We are. We have. <laughs> we <know. laughs> um, uh, well, the the suggestion on the table is. You can write policy anyway. It was the suggestion. It was the suggestion. Um, in order to achieve the timeline, um, we want to. In, have some kind of an incremental recommendation, starting with children. Does that make sense? That where children play. That, that, so that would include playgrounds, schools, schools, recreation fields. School what? Schools. Schools, schools yep. Um, athletic fields. In the parks. Arts and outdoors. 
I mean, and outdoors, what do you mean? Well, indoor and outdoor, that, that was in the... Uh, the school. Yeah, the, you know, the indoor outdoor. stuff that they said they used was the, ro the rodent traps. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> then, okay. it, that's a good point, and I'm... I mean, I think I would be inclined to talk more about kind of turf management than anything else, mm -hmm. and, and that that would be something that we could either think about later, because um, it's really rodent and ants. Well, that termites. Inside. That's what, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Termites, and the, but they only the only two they mentioned when they were here. Tony said was ants and rodents. But uh, what what are what else are you seeing on the list? Termites, ants, roaches, mice, rats. Right. For the indoors. I just want to add that um, From I was in touch is. with uh, Chip Osborne, who is the Marblehead. He was really the moving force behind the Marblehead oh. policy. He's kind of a um, nationwide expert on organic turf management. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been playing phone tech to see if he could actually be Skyped into one of our meetings. But that's the kind of question that I would love to ask Chip when they thought about the Marblehead plan, what did they do about the internal areas, or was it really just focused mm -hmm. on turf? Because really what we're talking about here is turf. We're talking about grass mm -hmm. management. True, except we're that about where children depending play. upon what they're using inside the school buildings, I mean, children do crawl around on the floor in the school, in the classrooms. So, um, so it's important, I think, for us to consider in the yeah, I mean, for example, the high school, they they have glyphosate indoors. I don't know how the weeds indoors, but that's part of the indoor plan. Oh, that's Jeez. just that doesn't make any sense at all. But that's in that. Glyphosate's part of the indoor plan. It's indoor. Yeah. Where? Well, may, maybe that's they just copy off of maybe here. they just you know. Wait, no, they, I lie, I lie. Oh, <laughs> oh good. That I didn't see the outdoor there. Sorry, 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 sorry. You didn't just make an error, you lied. I lied. Okay. <laughs> Pantry, well yes. Well done. <laughs> that was nice, but they use pheromone traps for that, so that's no big deal. It's very self-critical. Rodents, so, mice, ants, roaches. Uh -huh. So I like the idea of something related to organic turf management. Uh -huh. I said that we come up with something for council and that, um, and that I, the, the one thing is that I think, you know, laying out how that, that change is going to happen, you know, allowing, like uh, what uh, Marty spoke about, what, you know, what's the off ramp, you know, allowing a doable off ramp for the, the folks who are doing the management. So, what do you mean? Do you mean more than the waivers that? What, what no, what, what Marty talked about was that it, it was in particular, it was around farming. You know that's his area of expertise but that in terms of you know um, when you're creating a new regulation to actually have you know create the time frame where the learning can can actually occur and that the, the new processes can you know that if you make it too extreme um, that that you're going to get pushback um, because we can't do it in that time frame and that um, so anyway, just yeah. that there's a buffer for the learning and the new practices to come in. And I would, uh, I would argue to include city-owned farmland in that, um, because it turns out there's only this one field uh, where it's an issue. And I would like, uh, um, ideally, I would like to provide assistance to that farmer. Um, you know, grant money and um, technical expertise to help that farmer transition that land because it's in a residential neighborhood and I think you have to make an exception. I mean, the right to farm law was, was all about, you can't, you can't object to manure smells or whatever, but you can, sh but the objection to someone spraying toxic substances near your children is a lot different than manure smells. And you know, that's GMO too. If he has, if I he understand has, that is GMO. He's growing GMO corn and he's spraying Roundup. And it's so Roundup ready and he's GMO. That's exactly right. But, um, you know, uh, it, it, 
So I, but I agree with you that you need to have a time frame. It's not can't be a sudden change, but any as much, and I don't know how we could do this through a city council measure. But in in the ideal world, I would like to see us offer that farmer some help in transitioning away from what he's doing, um, giving not only a, a timetable but you know resources. So he's, so he's not just like, well, I guess I'm going to have to stop farming because that's the only thing I know how to do. Although, when the people moved in next door to, to his fields, he, they said he was only growing hay at that point. Don't ask me why he can't go back to growing hay, but I guess it's none of my business. Um, but it doesn't seem fair to just tell him he can't do what he's doing, but maybe we could find some way to provide them with assistance. And I don't know whether that's a city council thing or we have to do that outside of the city council. But well, we talked about having a section about what grant money was available. Yeah. Yeah. What about all the city departments when we pose the question to them about, OK, what would it take for you to go really 100%? And every one of them said, a lot of money. Right. Well, that could be a budget issue for the city council to, in, you know, include more money in the budgets for those departments. Well, essentially, if the city council passes this legislation, it behooves the mayor who creates the budget to find the money to make it happen because it's law. It's a funded legislation. Legislation that needs funding. Yes. Yes. Yes, and I think one of the things that, you know, would be in the preamble to the legislation is some of the um, research that we have that um, Bernadette alluded to, which is that there's an initial higher price to organic management, but within two to three years, your return on investment evens out. So, and that's something that I have talked to people at the DPW about, and they're, they're a little skeptical, but there really is research that says that. Um, but the section that I have essentially um, written and shared with all of you about grants, there are um, three different programs in the Northeast that we can take advantage of for at least two of our playing fields, our turf management, to at least start the process. And that maybe that the fine tuning of a piece of legislation would be more gradual than, you know, by one year all of our, all the places children play are going to be managed organically. We could say, um, you know, beginning with parks or beginning, so that we could take advantage of the grant opportunities because they won't fund us to convert all of our fields, but they, we can get grant money to convert some. I'm confused because I don't understand why all the playing fields for all the schools can't be like the JFK playing fields. Well, Donna said they were, Donna, except for the high school. She made one exception when she talked to us, and then it sounds like we have some suspicion that what she said isn't 100% accurate. But that's a good point, because if, in fact, they're saying we're using almost no chemicals, the conversion to organic management shouldn't be particularly more expensive than what's so already being like done. That's, so that's that is a good point. Too. And it's not the difference being that beautiful. we're talking about certified organic management as opposed to what they're doing now, which is trying not to use chemicals. So which I, isn't what she said, but I understand that that's and I think there's happening. Big difference in many of the play fields. Mm -hmm. So the JFK play field, you know, it's the back of the school, mm -hmm. and um, there's times where it it's just dried out. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, the 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 high school field is is um, pristine. They water it. It's they, you know, there's a range. lot of you know, and that um, the <laughs> with some of the fields, it, it's it's you know, they mow it, and hopefully it rains. And um, uh, Mainsfield, I think, has a, has a, a water system. Um, there's this um, soccer field up at, uh, what is it, Ray Ellerbrook? Mm -hmm. That's a very nice lake. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's managed organically. That's, that's a very, that would be, 
Um, yeah, so there's inconsistencies, and that um, that to you know there's there's the turf where everybody looks at it and like, oh, I'd love to go play frisbee on that, and then there's kind of the patchy kind of stuff. And JFK's a little bit more. A little patchy, but this, yeah. Well, well I've heard day, all day. I, you know, I'm I'm just saying that it, that um, I've spent a lot of time watching soccer games over the years, and there's a big difference. <laughs> and I've heard parents really complaining about the condition of some of the fields. But anyway, that's a that's a you know I don't think it's related to organic management. I think it's related to management. You know, if they neglect a field, then it's going to be gonna well. And it, I think neglect is sometimes you know Bernadette said that she calls it being organic by neglect. And that what that means is that you don't have any money, you're just mowing, rather than adding, you know, the, those four step, you know, turf systems, you know, with the chemicals and stuff. Because well, you can't afford it. Right. But if you're really gonna do organic management and you care about the field, you're gonna put compost on it and you're gonna do overseeing right. and you're gonna Right. Mold. And that's where it starts right. to get expensive. Yeah. And and that yeah, and they're, we're, we're comparing fields that, you know, some of these fields just aren't getting a lot of care. Exactly, they're just not getting any care, yeah. period. And so, yeah, if we say manage that organically, it's going to cost more money. Well, it's going to cost more money if we say manage it manage with chem it. <laughs> right. the chemicals as well. Right. So, yeah. and um, Well, and of course, hiring more staff is, is very expensive for the city, and then that gets to the issue of contractors. And I'm, what I'm wondering is if any of these towns that have these fancy policies, you know, whether they're using contractors, and if so, who, which contractors. Mm -hmm. I did look up the two contractors that we have been told are being used by Northampton, uh, True Green and um, Premier. And both of those companies, if you read their website, say, oh, and now we have the green option. Uh, where we blah, 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 anyway, so. Is um, Premier the one that used to be Politan? Associates that does our conservation areas? I don't believe so, no. So Premier that's is the third one that we have, but that's... Premier is the one that the schools use. For, oh, the um, schools you're talking about, okay. For everything except for the high, the high school, which I think the, the field, the, the football field is, is true green. Okay. <laughs> but they both say on their website, if you want the green option, the, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now I imagine they charge more for that. So well, again, that is. whatever it is. I don't know what that is. Well, they say all the right words on the website. That doesn't mean that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. But um, but I bet they charge more for it. So it still comes down to money. But it may be less money than hiring more DPW staff. So, but in any case, it boils down to these are the kind of decisions that would have to be made if we had if we came up with this policy. You, talking about the staffing um, and just going back to the point of the expense. When I've talked to Rich Parcelletti, the main thing that he has said is that organic management is just more labor intensive, at least for the first few years. So it's not, you know, that's what the cost really is, and that's what you're alluding to, I think. And um, and that's that, you know, that's a concern because the DPW staff, um, especially those that only deal, that deal with land management, are really already pretty um, spread really thin. I believe that, and um, you know, I think if you're using chemicals, it's sort of like almost mindless. It's like there's a schedule; you just blow up, and you just use that chemical whenever you're supposed to, uh, rather than having to like really look at the see what, what's needed here. Um, so there is a bunch of I, I, I think there's training and expertise that's required. But some DPW staff got trained when there was that spin. Two people? Rich Parcelletti and someone who no longer works for oh, the DPW. Oh dear. Oh. And that's why that training, the Tory training that um, was a grant that Springfield had that Northampton got written into to send two people to a training, um, that's why Rich you know, started working in this direction and using fewer chemicals because he went to that training. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I really do think these grant programs that are available would be really useful. One, because you'll get you know, the city would get money that we could mm. put towards it, but also it's really training people and shifting kind of their thinking right. and shifting the culture within the DPW or whoever's trained. It would be DPW if we're talking about turf. 
So remember what Bernadette also said, she said that when they, when they went back to these places that had converted to organic management, within a few years they had gone back to chemical management. Because it was their culture, they, it was what they're comfortable <laughs> with. And so her point was you have to regulate, because unless you regulate, the people are just gonna go back to the comfortable old way of doing things. I thought that was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind us too that um, there's tremendous appetite for this in the city. I mean, if you talk to, you know, yes, clearly it wasn't a representative group that came to our public forums, but so many people that I talked to, and you know, last night at that public <coughs> forum, I think the reason David Murphy, the counselor from Ward 5, talked about Child's Park is managed almost organically is because he knew the audience wanted to hear that. I think there is tremendous appetite in the city for this to happen. So we just have to make it practical as much as possible. And I think there will be a lot of support for it. So that's just my little rah-rah pitch that let's not lose sight of that as we deal with the practical challenges that we necessarily have. Anyway, sorry, I think you were going to say something, Cindy, and I kind of. No, I was just going to ask if any one department in the city were to be in charge of all of this and to have that funnel approach to oversee and look at it, who would it be? DPW? It depends which areas. Conservation is overseen by the planning department, the playing fields are overseen by DPW, but that's why we talk about enforcement, you know, like the Board of Health makes a lot of sense. If we can get people on board and we have a way to break it. Uh, enforce if we have the authority to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just seems like the, the commitment is varied amongst all these departments until the city says this is a priority, this is a goal, this is year one, your children play, this is year two. Mm -hmm. I guess ideally because the Office of Planning and Sustainability is writing our resilience report, they oversee the implementation of um, the Green Northampton plan. Mm. That's kind of logically where it might sit as an overarching, but Wayne, you know, has definitely expressed a lot of mixed emotion about this, especially in conservation areas but you know, in all the management realms so that he oversees. Mm -hmm. Well, I do think we should make reference to the fact that the, the city's master plan does talk, or the last sustainability plan talks about pesticide reduction on the current new draft, which is under discussions, also calls for pesticide reduction. Um, so, we can refer to that in our report. Um, but I think w rather than having it be one department's responsibility, I, I think it makes more sense for us to recommend that there be a standing committee whose job it is to oversee all the departments and try to coordinate what they're all doing. They have to have authority to do so. And how would they get that authority? I'm not sure. That's the problem we have to figure. <laughs> So the city council can't give that I think authority. there's there's the possibility of an advisory committee that coordinates a lot of stuff, but then there are the enforcers, and that again seems like the board of health is the best place for that to sit. Have, were you, at some point you were going to talk to her, you talked to Med Meredith just to feel her out around yes, this. Yes, I I actually um, so Meredith has been uh, um, away for Nomas. Mm -hmm. and but she's available and I wanted to I, I would like to speak with her and the chair together mm -hmm. um, and um, so she's out for another week and we're hoping to do that because I just want to uh, I was supposed to give a report at our last meeting but we the, the agenda took over so I didn't get to do that and so if I'm going to give a report to them it's no problem with me talking with those two people before I give the report and say, so here's the direction. Nobody's making any recommendations, but here's, mm -hmm. you know, here's these policies. What are you, what are you thinking? You know, because it's a different board now from when they were approached before. And and I don't have a I I don't have um, an idea which way the 
direction we'll go. We have a lot of things we're working on, all good things. Um, but you know, I just don't know. So, mm -hmm. And she's the one with the staff. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't speak to that. Mm -hmm. The staff of the enforcers. So if we, if the city council doesn't have any, if the Board of Health cannot be assigned the task of enforcement by the city council, then the next alternative would be for the Board of Health to decide by itself that it wants to enforce. Mm -hmm. um, well, the mayor, the mayor's um, is the supervisor of the director of the Department of Health, right? Mm -hmm. Where the chain goes? Yeah. But the she's mayor. not the board. Right. She Correct. doesn't have regulatory authority. No. But saying in this world, if the mayor felt this is important, this is who I want to enforce it, you can choose police, you can choose board of health, you can, you know. I think, I don't know of any instance where that has happened with our board, but I don't, I'm not bad. Mm. Yeah. She's not privy to that. Well, it would certainly help under any of these circumstances, if the board and the health director were interested in mm -hmm. doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, they would be tasked with doing the uh, regulation, which takes it out of city council, because the board of health has got a different role view. So I don't think they would do, I, I, I just haven't seen any, well, I, I should Speculate. Well, it certainly wouldn't meet our time frame. Um, you know, no. if, if the Board of Health no. took it up, it would take a long, long time because they're already committed to a number of issues right now. So, you know, but the City Council might act a little faster. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, and this is something that I have to check with the City Solicitor too, if we were to write into it. Um, we would be creating a law saying this is what needs to happen, and then it would say something. It could say something like um, enforcement to be determined by the mayor. I don't know if we can say that, Jim. Do you know? But if that's possible, then that would then leave it up to the mayor to appoint mm -hmm. the enforcing body. And essentially, I mean, it's really the board of health and the police are the only. Well, the building commissioner's office are the only enforcers in the city. That's not really true, actually. The DPW holds enforcement around things like, um, you know, downtown business if they can put planters in front of the stores and things like that. So they have certain things that they oversee as well. So there are a few options, I suppose, of who could be responsible for enf enforcement. It's just my question is, how do we, how would we write that into the legislation, or, or could we leave it to be determined by the mayor once the policy is passed, the law is passed, the ordinance is passed? Again, this tricky spot about, you know, you can't, I don't think as an entity can find itself, it becomes a human resource issue if an employee violates. Right. Oh, you're saying like if the DPW were in charge yeah. of enforcement, it couldn't yeah. find itself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it would have, would, enforcement would have to yeah. be something like you you go to the head of the DPW and advise them or tell them. Mm. But what's the penalty? So again, the health department makes the most sense because they're not actually applying pesticides. All those other departments are. But what's the penalty? What do you mean, what's the penalty? Well, these, you know, some of these yeah, municipalities have actual dollar amounts of penalties. Do. I, I don't know don't. whether they ever enforce it, but. I don't know. We have penalties like that for all kinds. I mean, literally, if a store yeah. downtown puts a planter out, they can be fined, That's I don't know, $200 business. or something right. like That's that. That's a private business, though. Do we have anything where we fine one of our the departments? Itself, right? Yeah, yeah that, I see what you're saying. Thank the other thing that occurs to me is, you know, um, it's an HR issue. Yeah. This um, this ridiculous um, document. Um, uh, excuse me. Um, uh, the, these uh, plans that the schools have on file. Oh, okay. Um, 
maybe that's not what I'm looking at here on my glasses. I'm, I'm sorry. You still might, yeah. But anyway. Jim's got it. Very good. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is a crap. This is what I mean. It doesn't matter to us. Um, you know, from, a, from our point of view, um, or from my point of view, I guess I should speak for myself, this is, you know, not helpful. This is, this is, um, if I were a parent, I would be appalled mm -hmm. at th that this is what is governing the school's use of pesticides. Bureaucratic so, um, but I imagine that this does satisfy the legal requirement put out by the state. Mm -hmm. That's why they so, did it. So, exactly, because they had to. So here, so this is another interesting question. You know, um, can the city require something stricter than the state requires of each school? Because the state requires each school to have this kind of a document. Now, can we as a city say, you know, this is really not good enough? If we set a policy, a mm -hmm. white policy that mm -hmm. can affect the schools, yeah. No. Well, I hope you're right. We still <laughs> have to produce this because the state requires it. Yeah, but we but can we say we can want something say, better and, this. and they're basically their document would say, you know, organically managed, certified, da da da, and that's all they would have to say. They wouldn't have to actually like roll out every well in terms of turf. If we're not talking about the Term. But the mayor could say, ah, oh, you got to go to the superintendent schools for this if you wanted to make something stronger. Right. And it so seems to be the, the trend. Well, this is what we're trying to find out from the city mm -hmm. solicitor because I do think that we, the city council, can pass an ordinance that tells the schools how they have to. Well, and it sounds like some of these other communities did that because if they have. Um, <coughs> If they're doing organic management only on all mm -hmm. city owned, like Marblehead, then that must include the schools, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to get some of their mm -hmm. schools' policies that they have to have on file and oh, see what it says. That's a really good idea. Well, and also with that, I see there's an opportunity to reinvigorate or invigorate those committees that, you know, there's a committee that's supposed to be approving this and having the school committees. I mean, each school is supposed to have like a school council that meets with the principal and that this would be a great thing for them to go over annually, you know, to have that, you know, those five, six, seven, eight people sitting down and having their names on that list because they've actually reviewed what's going on. Hmm. And um, You mean once it's mandated as organic management? Is that what you Well, mean? even right now that I think if that, a council could sit on that pest management committee and say, you know, lead school, we're, we want to go organic. I want to eliminate all of this stuff. And they could start moving that, that plan in that direction. Um, so that there'd be that kind of parent influence on the Yeah, because I agree, Elisa. There is a, that kind of, I mean, people are buying organic food. They're, they're riding their bikes. There's this push towards wanting to you know, have this less chemicals in our life. And um, yeah, I think they'd hop right on board with something like this if they knew they had the opportunity. And they would back anything that came through council. That's why I like your, your approach, your phased approach of children. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Children and parents. That's exactly schools. why I went with that first. Yeah. I think that's the appeal that we need to make first. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pull, I'm pulling up Marblehead's school policy right now. No, oh, thank just you. Just get a sense of there, and that site can't be reached. <laughs> Oops. Um, why is that? Could be this. It doesn't seem like it could be a good sign. Oh, yeah. which one are you using? Are you using City Hall Public? I don't use anything. I just go in. <laughs> but what wireless network are you on? You, you can check. Yeah, I'm going to go to okay, uh, City so. Hall. City Hall Public. What are oh. you on? City Hall Public. I'm you you don't have services. access to any special city city council? They don't kick you out. No. Oh. You have to pass for City Hall Public has got like some sort of timer on it. Oh. Oh, so you keep getting If you're inactive and, and you're listening to discussion, then you're tight to get back in. I've never been successful getting on that network, but. Anyway, um, 
This is really interesting. The high school policy. I mean, it's. It's a, very sad. It's scary. It is. It is. I mean, and there's so much more than um, the documents that they provided to us. They gave us all those MDS sheets, but there's so much more listed here than is there. And and you're right. This was updated the very same day as our as the meeting. <laughs> Which all says that you know some measure of oversight is good. Well, you know, they, no, yeah, stuff right. happens. Somebody's paying attention. Yeah, it, yeah. And I, I think shining a little light on this stuff is, is a good thing. Well, they must have um, no elementary school. Yeah, I'll try oh, no, there's elementary plenty. School. It's just that every single like daycare center is going to be in some school. So do we like morning meetings or evening meetings better? <laughs> I'm, I'm not a morning person, so I actually like evening meetings, but I'm usually in the minority. Well, I would prefer an afternoon meeting myself. I don't like morning meetings um, because for a lot of reasons, but... Um, okay, our swim time. Then you, you gotta go swimming. I don't mind you, but I don't go in the morning, do you? Except for on Saturdays. I used to go swimming in the morning at JFK at 6 <gasps> o'clock. And then it got too crowded and I stopped. Really? Yeah. 6 o'clock. Yeah. If they had a, a cappuccino at the end of the lane, I might buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's not a chance. Why don't we write an ordinance about that? There we go. It's still to get cappuccino machines at the end of every season. That's a lifeguard, but Excellent. I haven't gotten anywhere with it. Okay, so we are getting punchy, I can tell. So is Lesco, let's see, is Lesco one of the... You know, it is the Andy same Lesko thing. The, I think it's a distributor for Roundup. Yeah. They call it Prosecutor. Okay, so it, it, it is listed here, but is that one of the is ones that they gave us an MDS show? sheet for? No. See, that's why they got nailed back in 2012, because they were using LESCO, and um, it's not listed on any of the school's integrated pest management plans. No, they went and bought it at the hardware store. <laughs> that's what he says there. Mike Deenan says that in there. Oh, really? It's okay, oh, okay, because I, I just it. got it at the hardware store. Well, but let me just say that I believe that what LESCO is, is the same thing as Roundup. Right. Only it's marketed through a different distributor, Lesco. Oh, so he, 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 believes, he believes that if you can buy it at the hardware store, it doesn't have to be listed. That's in Mike plan. Demon. That's Mike Demon, right? Yes. But that's probably not true. No, it's not true. Yeah. So he was wrong. Yes. And that was part of why they got nailed for being. Well, anyway, so I have to read this. Nailed, but what happened to us? Yeah, right. They just got worse in their practices. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> what I can see. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, that's not the way I can Yeah, because that was seven years ago. <laughs> Slow. Can I ask a question? Yes. I was sitting here listening. I was just in knowing we're so close to UMass Amherst. Is there any way that the UMass Extension Service could be helpful? Well, in it depends who you <coughs> ask. Uh, some people say that the UMass Extension um, they do pretty much them. promotes um, the use of chemicals and teaches farmers how to use chemicals. They're based on what they call integrated pest management, IPM, and um, they have, you know, decision trees about when to use chemicals, but it's very, um, it's However, we, yeah. we, do, we do know the person who just became the director of the uh, UMass um, Extension Service. <laughs> so can we change? So we, we're gonna talk to them. Good, Good. we're hoping we're hoping to encourage because that to change, but in the meantime, it's not going to change that's fast. a way that we could get help for people. I mean, if they were giving, teaching mm -hmm. what we want, you know, what right. to get away from chemicals. Right. If they were, then they would be a resource, but I don't think they are there yet. But, but there is grant money for training that we might be able to apply for and then help all of these people who do this stuff in the schools get trained. 
I just looked at their extension services for farmers, specifically growing corn. Mm. Yeah, it's all chemical. G4D is a big one that they like. Yeah. So that's a, you know that that's sort of a side question related to this anti glyphosate movement, because um, the anti glyphosate people say glyphosate is the worst chemical ever. And I was thinking, you know, that's probably not even true. I bet there's a lot of worse stuff out there. Do you know? Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to take all of your. Oh documents. no no no! It's okay. I just wanted to kind of compare. Okay. Marblehead. Um, all of the chemicals that they're using at the Marblehead High School are not chemicals, except for it looks like rodenticides. Probably called, inside of a trap. Yeah, mm -hmm. something called um, diphethalone. Ever heard of that one? Diphethalone. <laughs> That's in a in a rodent trap. It doesn't say trap. It just says rodents yeah. for pest elimination and broadifacum. Facum. Sounds like. Would you search? Yeah. He's just, <laughs> <laughs> could you? Would you, could you send me the line? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, because it would be nice to, to get that to get a printout. And then there's like mosquito reason. larvae, and so they probably they use, use all BTI. Those, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll go to that. Things. But I don't see any um, turf management chemicals at all. Hmm. It's all for rodents and mosquitoes, and that's it. So they are managing well, their turf. Organic. Well, of course, you're trying to reach Chip Osborne anyway, but and so yes. Um, Probably Marblehead doesn't hire a contractor to manage, to help with management of any of these things. If they have Chip on staff, um, he's probably do. But because one of the things we're running into is that um, when Dave Pomerantz sent us the MDS sheets, it was only from Premier. It was not from uh, he did not True Green didn't send any MDS sheets, so we have no idea what True Green was on their uh, high school field. I love your rebranding. True Green. Come on. It used to be Kemal. <laughs> did, did you see the patchouli That's on funny. the Marblehead site? Patchouli? Patchouli. Really? Is it, they use that for road, for what kind of control? To, to repel did. humans? I hate the smell of that I do too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they really listen. <laughs> Oh. oh, that's a joke? You're so funny. <laughs> She's punchy. <laughs> you got we're, us. We're getting punchy. Do we have to accomplish anything else before we leave in four minutes? Mm. Um, so we, we were at this um, sort of juncture of, sorry Adele, I'm just, please, uh, the um, potential recommendations to the city council. And uh -huh. we've been talking about a lot of things, but certainly we need to pass this at the end of the council's term, timeline limitations. Mm -hmm. um, Elisa was talking about a, a sort of a, um, approaches to organic pest management where children play, um, perhaps as a one-year goal, a two-year goal, mm -hmm. as we go on. But um, other than that, we haven't come up with any other potential recommendations. We've been talking around a lot of things. Right. And, and so I'm not sure. Um, well, the other thing we talked about is having a, a special body named to, to um, oh, provide oversight for whatever it is that gets enacted. Um, um, and that, so that's, I think that's this an important advisory point. committee thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I I would actually prefer to call it an oversight committee, mm -hmm. so that it seems like it's actually S and T. Mm -hmm. Advisory sounds yeah. like oh yeah, well, even, if have have even if it doesn't have any T. Pardon me. Even if it doesn't have any T. Well, no, I think we would like to give it teeth. Oh. I'm just not sure how. No. We'll just, um, well, it, wouldn't that be what would decide on any ex exceptions? Isn't that what does, no, yeah, we some, get, uh, like the Marblehead Committee does? Outline the exceptions, yeah, the waivers. Uh -huh. and, um, and then we have to decide who's the enforcer. So I suppose if you don't have any enforcement, then you don't have any teeth, but you could at least, even if, like somebody just pointed out, um, I think it was you, Jim, some, just somebody paying attention changes behavior. 
Mm -hmm. um, also, if we're going to set up any kind of timeline for when different things are supposed to happen, I would see that not as an enforcement issue, so it wouldn't be the Board of Health, but it would be this oversight committee that would just be checking in regularly with the entities that are supposed to be addressing, you know, meeting the, the timeline. Right. And would it be checking in publicly so people could be there to hear? Any public body has that component, we wouldn't be able to establish something that weren't subject to open meeting law. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And in so North Hampton, I know. bet you that you could get people to come and listen to those reports. Yeah, that's right. That's that would be even more effective. Then. <laughs> so uh, the only other thing that we needed to talk about tonight in the next two minutes, or are we, do we have no minutes at all, was the, re the report structure and assignments and timetable. Um, why don't we say that for our next meeting, um, which I believe is November 4th, um, that we're going to have a draft of each section, as well as perhaps a draft of um, a, a rough draft of a proposed ordinance to, for our discussion. How does that sound? Um, what we don't know, what we haven't talked about, is how much detail do we want in each of these sections. So, for example, I, I produced that general overview of what we learned from the departments, which turns out maybe wasn't even all that true <laughs> or accurate. Or, um, but but it was very general. The, the what I did, um, and the question is, is is that the level of detail we want in the report, or do we want some more detail in each? section of our report so we, let's think about that we, we did talk about the reports being one page right that it was going to be a five page report with one page for each section okay. so um, that you can't have a whole lot of detail in one mm -hmm. page mm -hmm. but on the other hand the comments you gave me back on my draft had a lot more detail so. <laughs> well, i was very impressed <laughs> that you remembered all that it's in two page backs for those who like to write a lot Two page max. And if we were to have the draft section by the November 4th meeting, how would we um, distribute, disseminate? Uh, well, that's a good point because we have, it's, we have a meeting scheduled for the 8th, November 8th. You said 4th. What, the 4th? Oh, okay. oh wait a minute. Yeah, we have one scheduled for the we 8th. We do have one for the 8th, because we decided that we would have to have one more meeting before the due date of the 10th. But I know we have, I know we're going to have the 8th. Yep. We're just Pardon on me? May. We we're did have something on the 28th. Right? Oh, okay. Monday, that's what I have here. I have right, four. All right, so wait a minute. Let me 10 get. We have two meetings that week. We, we have two that meetings that week, week, but do so we have a meeting before the 28th? Oh, we do have a meeting on the t okay, so it's let's like have the day after tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, sorry, and then the eighth. Oh, so no, it's the several days from now. What do we get in there? Come on. <laughs> oh, we have a whole weekend to work on it. Okay. Um, could we have our rough drafts on Monday, the 28th? Yep. Okay. Yeah, rough drafts. Rough draft is on the twenty eighth, and then then we're then the next time we meet is the fourth, and then we'll have much more polished version at that point, um, and then we'll finalize it on the eighth and turn it in. So you say the sections, the individual sections of the report by department. No. Is that what we're writing? No, sorry. Um, no, it was um, the introduction. The, what have we learned about what Northampton is doing? And another section was going to be on what are other municipalities doing, and then what are our recommendations? Grant possibilities. Oh, grant possibilities. That's right. Who was doing recommendations? So when are you meeting on the twenty eighth? Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock a.m. Here in this room. Yeah, here I can't be here on the twenty eighth, but oh, I no. could call in. Oh, you will want to, as long as you get your report in. I'll get my report in. So the introduction was on him about what Alice is doing. Recommendations? Oh, who's doing recommendations? Isn't that a collective? Okay. 
Well, I think that we have talked about a potential recommendation tonight, so um, I think we should have, somebody should write that up. Somebody should write that up. I'm also working on a piece of legislation, so if somebody else could do it, that would be awesome. Okay. What, what's the request? Uh, a draft of what we've talked about is a potential re a recommendation that we could consider um, on the 28th. So number one is super easy. It could be um, see attached draft legislation. <laughs> Two would be some kind of oversight committee. Oh, no. Give it some details. You're doing recommendations right now. Yes, yes. I mean, just very broad strokes. Three, um, there was a three. Three, oh, three is, um, we had talked about a public education, making a recommendation. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, um, we definitely and that. we haven't, you know, defined. Public education. We don't, we, we're not mandating that, clearly, and the city council would mandate that. But that we would make a recommendation, I think, to the mayor to um, hmm. assign that. Hmm. The only way that we can mandate something with the city council is ordinance. And I think, no. think public education isn't suitable for an ordinance. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but those were the three things that I remember we've talked about a number of times as recommendations, and there might be more. We have to look back at minutes. Yep, I will go back and look at the minutes. Um, I mean, another way we can do this is have each one of us just brainstorm three recommendations. Yep, I think that'd be great. Um, and actually write them up though so that we could on the floor here we actually have to since we can't share them ahead of time really and right or we can share them but don't anybody make comments and then bring your recommendations they would have to be changed here on the floor mm -hmm. as people give input oh I see so you could send it out but you just can't discuss it by email okay that'd be great so everybody send out to everybody, what your what your draft your drafts and your rec your uh, proposed recommendations. What was the second one? Oversight committee. Okay. And I think when we think about some of that, just to recommend an oversight committee, that means a lot more um, uh, skin on those bones. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, so, um, Dasa, do you want to volunteer? to take that particular one, that's the hard, probably the hardest. To finalize it? No, to um, put up, just make, just draft it. Send, to send a draft around of, you know, what would a recommendation potentially look like for recommending an oversight committee? Uh, what would a oh, recommendation I look like? Okay. Were you talking about everybody just writing up their ideas? Or you that was my understanding. That was my, my understanding as well. And I was just saying that, that the idea of a recommendation of an oversight committee, for example, is really more stuff to it. Just like a recommendation for public education is more stuff. Um, so. But you're talking about assigning different people different recommendations to flesh out? Uh, well, I was hoping somebody would volunteer to just write up the three that we've talked about, plus, uh, you know, everybody just chiming in and, and sending out other ideas that, that occur to them. Well, it sounds like Elisa's working on the first one, right? She's working on an ordinance. All right, so that's the let's, let's draft legislation. Yeah, so that would be the first one. The first one you said was a draft. Are you referring to children play? Yeah. Good. Draft yeah. legislation. Yeah. The draft legislation pertaining to children, right? Yeah, I don't, we don't know what your draft yeah. legislation yeah. is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. With a timetable and all that that you talked about. Great. Well, that's true. <laughs> um, all right. I'll I'll try to work on the oversight committee. Unless somebody else wants to. I'll work with you on it. How's that? Sounds good. I did do the introduction over again. I feel yeah. a little bit. I saw that. I thought, yeah, I thought it was coming along, and um, you were going to be working with Alisa on that, right? She was going to do the first paragraph. Oh, what was the first paragraph? The introduction. Oh, the introduction. Bye, Sharon. Bye. Marina. Bye, Sharon. What? Google Docs. 
Yeah, no, I know. Oh, yeah. So anyway, I did I did communicate with the city solicitor on Google, Google Docs, Docs and he said, absolutely not. We can't use Google Docs. Was it the history? Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I have anything in my notes about it. Oh, wait, I already said that. Yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're not using it. I think that's what but it was. But if we're both just working how on this it. this came about or something like that, wasn't it? Maybe a rehash of the resolution, something like that. What? Well, sort of um, introductory statement relative to. I think as a committee, we cannot work on Google Docs. Right, right. Two, two right, individual two people can draft history. It. The history of this committee. That's, that's okay. what it was. Okay, so uh, I'm going to keep this thing that you that you gave me, Kate. Um, is there any? Uh, and this one was mine. And over and I printed that out. What about the, can I, can I keep this? Sure, sure. Temporarily? Yeah. Um, oh, this is East Town, so that would be if I take that one? Yes, I might give you, I think I have two East Towns, and I have, I have Leeson over here. Of course, there's stuff on that one. <laughs> I grew up on Cape Cod. It's not the only did some scratch on the east of the Okay, map. thank you. Okay, great. And are you going to keep um, Northampton High, which is fine, and then there was another policy? Uh, there was Newton and East Ham. You want to keep Newton. Okay. Is that so okay? Lisa, and I'm now going to back to you. I no, have no, that no. we were going to work on that first page together. It might be on the back of his. It's true, and I looked at it and gave you <laughs> oh, sent you that first email. No, 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 I never got that. Oh, okay. Well, it's all, it's completely oh, different. Oh, no. so you know that. Is it, are you doing it on the Google Doc? Yeah. Like I do the more so I can check the Google Doc again and I can do any first exactly do any changes or whatever you think is better. Right. So the question is, is what we have good enough for doing? So I, I'll I'll take what you did and and make it better. Flavor it up. Flavor it up. All right. <laughs> now so, should I continue with these tables? There's two be, I'm working on. Must meaning, be, like, <laughs> meaning uh, what more is there to add? Well, all these new things in the IPMs. <laughs> well, you're, uh, how, many schools, schools. how many schools are you going to yeah. look up? I know, I just do Why don't we just attach them as addenda? The table? The, the actual schools plans. Just the schools. You mean, oh. you, you mean say, I guess that's what I'm asking. Let me so just you say have this your much. table, but then the, the addenda of the school plans is what I was thinking. The IPMs that Cynthia, right? Said, okay, I took all the pesticides that are in there for each school. Oh, for each school? And I put it into the tables. I just oh, had the high school right. left, okay. which is actually only maybe three or four additional ones. Wow. But they already Except said. Except for True Green, we don't know if they're using Yeah, we don't know anything about right. True Green. But well, we might know eventually, but we don't know right now. Are you saying they're from the high school, each school? Are you designating that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, wow. I know <laughs> all the schools, so that's what it says at the end. Smith Oak? No. That's not within our scope, my understanding was. Yeah, well, we got to find out about that, nope. I think. Right, Yes, it's a school district that sits under Northampton. So if the city solicitor gives us the go-ahead around right. the schools, right, then, then I can add it in. Right, but that's we didn't get any reports from them when we had the school department. No, we do not. Talk right, but us. we do have their IPM. Correct. Right. I need so to look at them. I yeah, think I think okay. if you add in the high school, you've done plenty of work, and then we just attach their, the Smith Oak IPM at the end. Okay. That's, sound good? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, if we're that, sorry, yeah. <coughs> Side conversation. I missed that, Jim. Oh. I'm ready to report. So, uh, Kate was wondering whether or not we should be adding in the Smith vote into the charts, mm -hmm. and I was just saying that if she, if we, if she felt like she was doing a lot in terms of the, the chart so far, that we could just attach the Smith Oak IPM, you know, and then we'll just have all of the Northampton public schools will be in the charts, and 
the Smith Folk IPM. I would like an addition to see the IPMs attached because this is going to be a public document. That's a good point. Yeah, I agree. And I, when oh, people really look good. at the magnitude of you know how this is being managed and not managed very well, I think it, it will have impact. Okay, let me so go. Well, there are two tables. Okay. One of them has a lot more detail right. as to LD50s, right. blah, blah, blah. Right. and the other one is more specific to exactly why the p pesticides are being used. So that's simplified in a way, but then now it's got... <laughs> it's got more, more, you've added a lot to it because of the uh, IPM uh, documents for all the schools. Yes. Well, that, that just, you know, makes it longer, longer. but I'm just trying to... Oh, oh, I know what it is. Um, we took out the LD50s and we took out the KOWs. Right. And then we added application. Right. Okay. Right. So that's the difference between the two tables. Right. Right. Yeah. So I still think the two tables going because I am kind of doing that. Oh, I see. I don't. I don't know <laughs> that you need to keep adding to the more detailed table because I. I just. I. I don't know where that's going to go. I'll keep doing it. Okay. It's, it's if just, you don't mind doing it, no, I don't. It's just you do one, you can do the other. Okay. The numbers are different, but that's all. Okay. Great. I do it until my head explodes, and then I go do something else and come back. So, just, okay. to, just to review, each one of us are going to do a draft of our sections and send send that draft to all of us. Mm -hmm. No commenting. And we are also going to, if we feel we have. Um, two or three or four recommendations, just to put that in there too, to be discussed. We want to flush those recommendations out, but, but we can do that as well. Um, um, so the draft legislation pertaining to children, Alicia's going, Alisa's going to do oversight committee, um, Adele and Jim. These were some of the recommendations we're spinning around right now, mm -hmm. trying to flush those mm -hmm. out a little right. bit more. Um, are we obligated to bring copies of our draft to the next meeting, or will people, how do we want to do that so that we can cut and paste and comment? People should make, we're going to share the drafts with each other. Mm -hmm. People should read everybody else's and make their comments in the margins, however they do it, whether they print it out and write it down or okay. use uh, whatever it's called, uh, text, <coughs> what's it called? Bring, track changes. Track changes. Thank you. <laughs> and bring it with you so that when we're sitting together, you can offer your comments and we can decide as a group if we right. want to alter something. Because right. it can only be done on the floor. So that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I'm assuming we have no new business. Right. And <laughs> a motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, a motion to adjourn. A second. Second. Uh, uh, all in favor. <laughs> all in favor. <laughs> People are more in favor. <laughs> we have no more forums. Is that